another thing that mental toughness is, is that's the ability to rebound from adversity. And that process of adapting in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, or whatever source of stress comes against us. I know that we all know people that have been through some tough adversity, yeah. but you would never know it. They still have joy and peace in their, and, and, and they didn't let it destroy them. Without Fear of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm your co-host, Andrea Ingstrom, a real estate investor and business coach and co-founder of The Partnership for Realtors. And I'm here with my co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the book, Without Fear of Her future. Over the past two years, Teresa has had over 300,000 join her masterclass where she teaches women how to become successful real estate investors. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Andrea. Oh, hello. And welcome back to Without Fear of Her Future podcast. As part of our discussion today, we are going to examine, examine mental toughness and how important it is to develop this skill. The importance of mental toughness extends beyond how you interact with the world, but also how you think about yourself. This is a uh, personal topic that I love, Andrea. I think you and I are both going to enjoy this so much yes. today. Yes, yes. I'm excited. Um, and this is something that I think this is one of the biggest things that women joining your masterclass and who join your mentorship um, learn from you because this is something I think you live out on a daily basis. And, um, and, and I can prove it by the pictures you post on Facebook of you sweating it out in the gym or on the, on the field when you're training for one of your tough mud run whatevers. Um, but I think you inspire so many of us. So I'm excited to hear about this topic from you today. So Teresa, tell, let's talk a little bit more about what is mental toughness? What is mental toughness? Well, if I just take, tell you the uh, dictionary, uh, what it plainly says, mental toughness is a measure of individual resilience and confidence that may predict success whether we're talking about sports, education, or the workplace. So uh, it's just important. But I really think of it as a personality trait that determines our ability to perform consistently, especially under stress and pressure, which is really the way we live our lives, right? Right. So That's so like every day. <laughs> absolutely. So it's very closely related to qualities that you like to talk a lot about character, resilience, grit, and perseverance. Yes. My favorite, my favorite word, my word for last year was integrity. And I always bold that word grit in the word integrity. And I love Brene Brown's definition from her book, Dare to Lead. She says, integrity is choosing courage over comfort. It's choosing what's right over what's fun, fast or easy. And it is practicing your values, not just professing them. Ooh, yes. I love that. Courage over comfort. Because right. here's the truth. Most of us, especially in America, we live just such comfortable lives and really and truly, most of us never have to do anything that's uncomfortable. If we right. don't decide to do it on purpose, we, I mean, we all have AC and heat. We have cars to get us where we want to go. We have food, at, you know, at our beck and call, wherever we can Uber Eats. We can, I mean, we never really have to get out of our comfort zone unless we determine to do that. However, mm -hmm. If we really want to make impact, if we ever want to really do anything extravagant in this world and be successful, then we have to purposefully get out of our comfort zone. Because if we just always live within it, we're going to live a really small, boring, non-adventurous, and probably mediocre in our finances and everything else in our life. 
Mm, I love that. I love that. I, I think we have uh, today this resistance also to, to feeling uncomfortable yes. because we're so used to being uncomfortable. Yes. Um, and I, I like to, I like to say that, you know, the thing that you want most is very likely on the, the other side of what you resist most. Yes. And what we resist most is being uncomfortable or doing the hard thing. Yes. Yes. And we're going to talk a little bit about doing some of those hard things in a minute. But you know, another thing that mental toughness is, is that's the ability to rebound from adversity. And that process of adapting in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, or whatever source of stress comes against us. I know that we all know people that have been through some tough adversity, yeah. but you would never know it. They still have joy and peace in there and, and they didn't let it destroy them. And mm -hmm. then we also know people who have gone through something and they've never recovered. They're still yeah. talking about it years later. They can't get past that thing. And so I think that we have to be determined that we are going to rebound from whatever happens. Um, and I, one way that I like to do that personally is before I'm, before it's even over, I am deciding that I'm going to rebound from it. Like I, mm. I, before, you know, I may be even in the middle of going through something. And in my mind, I'm already practicing how I'm going to get through it and how I am going to think, act and speak about it when it's all over. Yes. Yes. I, one of the points of culture that I talk about on a, on a regular basis on my coaching calls in the mentorship for the women's real estate investors network is this concept of being above the line or below the line and above the line, we take ownership, accountability, and responsibility for everything that is happening in our life. And here's the thing, you know, when bad things happen, when, when we experience something really stressful and in some cases even traumatic, you know, those things are not our fault in most cases, but they, it, and it's, it's not our fault that it happened, but it is our responsibility to, to move forward and to yes. heal and to do what needs to be done next. And I think, you know, we can't control their circumstances around us. We can't control everybody else. We can't control what other people do because sometimes yep. people do bad things. That's, That's just right. reality, right? Yes. But we can control our attitude and we can control our response to it. Absolutely. And that's that, that mental toughness, that grit that we have to develop. That's one of the hardest things, right? Is when somebody does something bad mm -hmm. to you or to someone you love, even, you know, even harder, I think harder. Is someone you <laughs> yes. love go through pain um, or to lose someone that you love that, that, that to, to be able to have the mental toughness to shift your attitude in that situation. Yes. That is, that is the sign of someone who is really growing into, into someone that God can use for huge things. That's exactly right. I think that forgiveness has to be huge when somebody's yeah. done something to us. Yeah. Hanging on to that bitterness is hurting us more than it's going to hurt anyone else. And it's going to hurt everyone around us because they really don't want to hear us talking about it and carrying on about it and, you know, all the things. So let's just forgive and let go and move on. There's bigger, bigger and better things ahead. Mm -hmm. Or we stop our growth by just getting stuck in that last bad thing that happened to us or that last loss that we had. And, you know, even in this business of real estate investing, you know, we're going to have some lows. We're going to lose some deals. Things are going to go wrong. And we can get stuck on that last bad thing that mm -hmm. last loss and never move on or think, oh, it just doesn't work or, or you just move past it. You grow from the experience, you learn from it and you get out there and you go again. Absolutely. That's truly what mental toughness is in every area of our life, whether it's relationships or finances or business or, or physical, mental, emotional, whatever it is, it's really just pushed through. And I think one way to do that is being determined to, mm -hmm. because here's what I think most of us don't really take the time to think it through. Yeah. When, when adversity comes, we just get caught up in the, the adversity of it instead of stopping and really thinking, okay, I'm in the middle of some adversity. I'm in the middle of something crazy. How am I going to choose to handle this situation? I want to handle it with grace 
with confidence. Um, I'm not going to fall apart. And I think really, Andrea, as soon as you say those things out loud, you begin to be that person. Yes. You begin to think about it and automatically you're going to begin to react different than if you never even think about it and you just begin to shrivel and fall apart and just say random things about the situation instead of taking control and thinking about, oh, how am I going to face this adversity? Yes. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's so powerful. I love that you talked about um, reminding yourself who you are. I think that is such a huge strategy, like to have decided who you're going to be Um, because we don't always show up as her every day, right? (laughs) We got to decide who we're going to be. And then when things get hard, we have to remind ourselves of who we're going to be. I I heard someone say this last week that like, that recommitment is 10 times more important than commitment. Yeah. Because it's easy for us to make a commitment and, and be excited about it. But when things get hard, that's when we have to go. That's when that, that inner discipline, that inner toughness comes in and we have to be willing to recommit. And so that recommitment over and over again, like reminding ourselves, I am disciplined, I am brave, I am kind, even in stressful situations, (laughs) I am tenacious, I can do hard things, that is who I'm going to be today. But it's more important than ever that we remind ourselves of that when things happen and when they get hard. I love that you mentioned um, forgiveness. I think forgiveness, like one of the things that, that holds us back, um, I think the most in our life is, can be resentments yes. and, it's a, and it's allowing someone else to ha- kind of have a power over you or just holding on to something. And so many times people don't even know that you're resenting them. It's like, I've heard yes. unforgiveness is like drinking the poison that you intend for someone else. <laughs> yes. And it hurts you more than it hurts them on, in almost every situation. Yes. Yes. So absolutely forgiving other people. But you know, another thing is we have to forgive ourselves. I mean, so many times we do screw up. Mm -hmm. We didn't handle something the way that we wish we had of. We fail. We gave up. And all we can do is brush ourselves off, forgive ourselves and move on and not get stuck in, oh, I'm a loser. Oh, I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I failed at that. I failed that time or I didn't handle that correctly. But that doesn't make that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. So let's let go of that and, and move on. Absolutely. One of my favorite, one of my favorite exercises I've ever done with, um, with a, with a mastermind group was we were all, we were all going to share, like, what do we think this last year set us up best? Or like, what do we think in our life has set us up best for our next level of success? And so we all went around and everybody was sharing what, what it was that set them up for success. And I was expecting to hear from people, well, I did 10 deals last year. Or, <laughs> and so now I know I can do 20 this year, right? Uh-huh. No, nobody said anything like that. Everybody shared a hard thing, Ooh. something really challenging that they had experienced or that they had been through. And that showed them what they are capable of in the future, yes. the lesson that they took from it. They said, now I'm going to take that lesson into this next chapter because that's the thing that set me up for success. And so I just want to encourage all of our listeners, if you have experienced a failure or something that, you know, you, it did not turn out the way that you hoped it would. In fact, it fell flat or you, you know, something, something went totally sideways on it. You know, our job as um, students of the, the universe is to, (laughs) is to show up and learn the lessons that we need to take from that. Because I think, I think, I believe this hundred percent to be true that if God gave us everything that we were asking for right this moment, most of us would not be ready to receive those gifts. We couldn't handle it. No, no. We have not learned the lessons or become the person that we need to be in order to be the, a steward of that. And our identity has not shifted to a place where we could even, maintain those gifts. And so like working on this mental toughness piece, making sure that we're letting go of resentments, that we are learning the lessons from the things, the bad things that happen in our life Mm -hmm. and that we're developing that inner fortitude. That is what helps us to become the person who is capable of receiving those gifts at the level that that God wants to give them to us. You know, you mentioned masterminds and I am, I'm a I love attending masterminds. And one of the reasons is because I love to hear, listen, business is hard. 
running a bit, being an entrepreneur is hard. Really just whatever you're doing in life is hard. Being a mom, being, you know, all the things are hard, but I love being around other people that will share, like you just yeah. talked about their, their, their defeats, but now they're succeeding. You see that they got back up. And they didn't quit and they kept going. And that is with all my heart, the kind of woman I want to be. So um, let's talk about how you, how do you, Andrea, develop mental toughness? Because I know it's not a trait that you're either born with or without. It involves behaviors and thoughts. We can learn and develop mental toughness it requires yeah. determination but give me some maybe thoughts that you have about how you would develop mental toughness well i i, I talked about a couple of them earlier because i'm such a big believer in affirmations and deciding in advance who you're going to be yes. in a hard situation um but i think that that same principle applies to um, when you're about to embark on a new journey, um, in whether it's in real estate or in business or in something that you're trying to accomplish in your life. Um, one of the things that I really encourage people to do when you're writing your goals is to actually take a moment and write down what are the obstacles that I am likely to encounter Ooh, as yeah. I embark on this journey and to, and to take a few minutes and go and, and write down what are the possible ways that I will overcome those challenges. And so then when we get to the hard stuff, when, because it is going to come, mm -hmm. we are, we are fooling ourselves if we don't think that we are not going to face challenges or adversity as we are moving towards things that are bigger than where we are right now. And so if we will take the time to think through what are the hard things I'm going to need to to do and what what might be an obstacle that keeps me from from moving forward powerfully and then we have a strategy in place we go okay Absolutely. so if this happens or when this likely happens this is what i'm going to do and so we've already mentally put ourselves in the place where we're like so that when we when it happens or if it happens we go I know what to do. I already had a plan yes. for this, right? And we can't control everything and have a plan for everything, but just knowing that you have a, a game plan or that you're like, Hey, I already knew that I was going to face obstacles. And so I show up to those with the expectation that I will navigate through them. I will navigate around them. And they are not going to be the thing that stops me from moving forward with power because I knew it was coming. Right, man, I love that. I have never thought about that, and I've never done that. But like when you're writing your goals, yeah. you know, we, we when we're you know, it's the new year, it's exciting to write the goals, and the last thing that we're thinking about is that there's going to be any obstacles. You know, right. we always have in our mind it's going to be smooth sailing. But that is so powerful to take the time to look at each goal and go, what could be some obstacles that's going to come. That is powerful, Andrea. I'm going to add that to my, awesome. to my list. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, Teresa, I, I admire you so much for um, being transparent and you, I know that you practice hard things. Can you give us some examples of hard things that you practice on a regular basis or things that you do personally to develop that mental tough toughness? Well, I, right now I have challenged myself to, um, to do a couple of different things, but one of them is I am doing at the end of my workout, I'm doing a three minute plank. Um, so no, and like, so today it was so difficult. I had done a full upper body workout. So, you know, chest and shoulders, uh, buys and tries. And then I was, I was already, you know, like depleted and then to hold myself up in a plank for three minutes, it was so tough, but that's for 90 days I am doing at the end of every workout. I'm ending it with a three minute plank because I do want to challenge myself. I want to do something hard. I want to push myself because, and it was hard today, but you know what, when you get up, Andrea, there is something so powerful about it. You feel so good. You're like, I did that thing. And, and, it, and then it rolls over to other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. You think that was freaking hard and I <laughs> did it. And then when you're hit with one of those obstacles that you're, you're talking about, we are so less likely to fall apart. We're so yeah. because we see ourselves as strong. We see ourselves as winners and we don't see ourselves as little weaklings that can't 
handle adversity. So, you know, I've just started practicing doing those cold plunges and I do a mud run every single year. Well, two years in a row now it's been canceled. But <laughs> um, I mean, so I am. So those are things physically that I like. I just purposely do some hard things on a regular basis just to remind me of who I am. And, you know, I don't always, like, I'm going to be honest. There's a few times when I've attempted the three minute plank and I only made it two and a half minutes. Yeah. You know, so I don't always win, but I am trying with all my heart and it just makes me more determined to do it the next day. So I just think that we have to, we have to just determine um, to practice some hard things, whatever that looks like, um, eating healthy food, you know, drinking the water that you, you know, I drink half of my weight in ounces of water. Um, so just putting it out there and then showing up for yourself and doing some hard things, just not always taking the easy way out because mm -hmm. that, and I, you know, I wasn't an, for whatever reason, I probably spent the first 40 years of my life, Andrea, never doing anything hard unless I had to. You know, yeah. sometimes life requires you to do something hard. And then yeah. I could get through that, but I never purposely did anything hard. Mm -hmm. but when you purposely start doing hard things, it changes the way you think about yourself. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, one of the things I think, um, I think that a lot of us don't, don't recognize uh, is the hard things that we have done. Cause you know, you said you spent the first 40 years of your life, not intentionally doing hard <laughs> things, but you did some hard things. Like you went through some stuff yes. and I think so many, so many people go through that stuff and they don't look at it as something to celebrate. They yeah. look at it as like, that's the stuff I want to forget about. Yeah. But in reality, it, like we need to take a moment sometimes, I think, and, and like celebrate the woman that that is making us to to be like, yeah. how has that built us um, built character in us? Yes. Um, and to look back and say, like, that happened and I got through it. And now look at my kids and now look at my like what I've built here and yes. now look at. I'm okay. And that's a big deal. You know, I love it. You know that I think that's something that um, like the breast cancer awareness, one of the things that they have done really, really well is they have taught cancer survivors to see themselves as survivors when it's over. And I think that we should take that on in every aspect of life. I am a survivor of divorce. I'm a survivor of high school. <laughs> I was the survivor of, you know, I, I, I did four years of college and I got that degree or I ran a marathon. So we have survived so many things. And I really want the listeners to think about maybe even make a list. What have you survived in your life? What have you done that was difficult? And you're still alive. Yeah. You're, you're still here to talk about it and celebrate that success and no, make, realize, gosh, I am stronger than I think I am. I'm braver than I think I am. And when push comes to shove, I can do whatever is necessary. Yes. Yes. I know there's a lot of women that are listening right now going, yes, Teresa, <laughs> yes, I can do anything that's necessary. I love it. I love it. Um, so, okay. But developing mental toughness also includes saying no to yourself, Ooh. right? And I think saying no to other people sometimes, but let's talk about saying no to yourself. Cause I think that's one of the hardest yep. things because of the comfort issue that we all yes. have. We want what we want when we want it. Um, and so let's talk about saying no to yourself. How do we, how do we develop that kind of mental toughness? Oh my. And this is again, something that I, I do on purpose on occasion. You know, I, I like to fast, um, mm. you know, to go with, cause I love me some food. Mm. I love sugar. I love bread. And so I will purposefully set a time that I am not going to eat any sweets for this many days, or, or I'm going to go a day without any, you know, maybe just drink water or, um, but you could also alcohol, TV, social media, do just really on purpose again, deciding to say no to yourself. 
whether mm -hmm. whatever, if you've got something that you're addicted to something mm -hmm. that you, you know, you just, you, you, then that is probably something that we should begin practicing saying no to ourselves, even, you know, debt, debt, yes. spend you know, overspending. We, we don't have, exactly. Just because we want it doesn't mean we should buy it right this minute. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just practicing in all things, saying no to ourselves again, it takes a form of mental toughness. You know, I'm a Starbucks girl. I go to Starbucks usually 365 days a week, a year. And, um, you know, I was just thinking about that. I'm being honest. I have not given that up, but I think there are just some days that I should just say no to myself. Tracy, you just don't get everything you want. Every little yeah. thing your heart desires. It, that's just not the way that we were built. We become yeah. to me, we become spoiled little brats. If we just indulge our every little desire. Mm hmm. You know, I can't I can't even think of how many times I've heard someone say, well, I could never give that up. I could never because I went through a period where I had I, like I, I was doing like one of those um, food elimination diets because I was having so many gut issues. I was trying to figure out what in the world was wrong with me. And so I did one of those like allergen tests to yes. see what I'm food sensitivity tests to see like what it was. And do you know that I was sensitive to coffee, to eggs, to dairy, to like all the things in the world that I loved the <laughs> most, they were telling me that I was having, like, that was my problem. So I was drinking coffee and it was giving me brain fatigue. And I was like, but I can't give up coffee. <laughs> but every time I drink coffee, I feel crummy. <laughs> and so I drink more coffee to feel better. But, but you know, when you, but you figure out when you give those things up, like you start to feel better. If, yes. it's some, if it's something that's affecting you in that way, whether it's sugar or dairy or coffee or gluten or whatever yes. it is, like when you give those things up and you give your body time to heal, like it feels like such a hard thing to give it up. But the reward on the other side is so great. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, I've been, um, I've been working on my sobriety now for, it's been about three years since I started my wow, sobriety journey. So and amazing. if there's anybody else out there who identifies with this, like you think that you could never give up alcohol. If that's something that really has, has a hold on you mm -hmm. and to the, what I've learned about myself in that process. But also I just want to say this, that it's not, you know, and sometimes when giving those things up, it is not about our own mental toughness as much as it is our a willingness to rely on God, our yes. willingness to say, I don't got this, but <laughs> God, I know you got this. And with, you know, with us together, we can make this thing happen. And so I just want to encourage our listeners, like, uh. like, don't try to do this alone. You know, like if you've got something hard that you're going to have to say no to, like get support around that, mm -hmm. because that can be one of the hardest things, but also one of the most rewarding things to yes. help you become who you need to be, to be ready for the gifts God has for you. Yes. And the promises are coming if we are just faithful. And so get, you know, allowing, allowing God to be our, our, um, our support and our, our wisdom, strength, but also absolutely. our strength, but also reaching out to other people, because sometimes we're dealing with stuff that we can't just it's do this. Serious. Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's a big deal. So, yes, I'm so glad you said that because I do believe that mental toughness, because we can get in, it's not all about willpower because right. we've only got so much willpower, but mm. now when we call on God to be a part of that, now mm -hmm. it's a whole new ball game. So I'm so glad you brought that up. So glad. Yeah, yeah. And I just also wanted to say, uh, I know that a lot of people, especially in these, this season and these times that we live in there, they deal with fear, so much yeah. fear. So think about what's causing some of that fear. And I think a lot of it is news, social mm -hmm. media. And if that is really something you deal with, maybe that's what you need to say no to mm -hmm. limit that. I don't want you to live without the news and never know what's going on, but you don't need it 24 seven, you know, you know, one little 20 minutes a day, you can get caught up on what's really going on in the world. And so that's what we have to look at is, um, what areas in our life do we struggle? And then mm -hmm. where should we say no to ourselves in that situation? Or where do we need to build this um, mental toughness in these particular areas that we're struggling with? So mm -hmm. I think one of the things that can be really hard when, 
when it comes to mental toughness, um, because there's so much emotion connected to it is when we have to say no to people that we love, Ooh, yeah. when we have to make boundaries or shift relationships that are not serving us well. Um, that can be one of the, I think the hardest things, especially as women, we are wired often or programmed, uh, to be people pleasers yes. or to make sure everybody else around us is happy. And I think one of the, one of the hardest things to do for your own personal development is to learn to be okay when someone else is acting like they're not okay because you're doing, you're, you. yes. Girl, yeah, I think that's something that we all struggle with. But there's freedom on there's freedom with it when we can learn to say no. There's so much freedom that comes with that. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to bring one another thing up. Um a, a, another area, another way that we can deal with mental toughness and to be strong is to put challenging situations into perspective. Yeah. And so, so many times again, because we just live this life that's free and easy, um, we will see everything as a catastrophe mm -hmm. instead of just an inconvenience. How many yeah. times do we do that? So again, if we will ask ourselves when we're frustrated, when we're angry, when we're, you know, we're getting ourselves all riled up to just ask ourselves, is this a catastrophe or is this just an inconvenience? This is such a great question. Yeah, I think, you know, it's so funny. Like I had this moment the other day and I was I was experiencing this sort of a emotion where I was like, because I found out, you know, we had to pay for something before we were going to have the money in to pay for something. And it was a, the, the juggle that we do as real estate mm -hmm. investors so many times. And I literally sat in my living room and I did this. I went, <laughs> like I was going <laughs> to ugly cry <laughs> all by myself. And then I was like, wait, I shouldn't, this is okay. Like, I'm going to be fine. This is not a catastrophe. And then I started to ugly cry again. I was like, no, Andrea, like you're okay. No one has died. <laughs> like we're going to right. figure this out. <laughs> yes. Uh, my, oh, um, I, I am, so, I am so agree with that because we, <laughs> everything can do, we just want everything to be perfect with or We're waiting in yeah. line. We're waiting in traffic. Yeah. Somebody doesn't come through and, and we just can blow our top and we get ourselves all riled up. And if we will just step back and go, well, all right, well, you know, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this yeah. isn't what I wanted. This isn't yeah. what I expected. But hey, I love that. Nobody's nobody out died. Everything yeah. is all right. Every, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, they say if if it's not going to matter in five years, then does it matter? You know, how much does it matter right now? Mm -hmm. So just asking ourselves those questions can immediately bring some calmness to mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And you know what happens is we think better. We mm -hmm. think better and more clearly when we start putting things into perspective because we get, yeah. we can get really irrational really quick if we allow ourselves to do that. Absolutely. You know, I was raised by a very strong woman, my mom, um, and she, and she was strong because she had been through a lot. Yeah. Um, but when she, and um, when she was nine years old, her mother died of cancer Oh. And a few years later, her dad committed suicide. Wow. And so her and her yes. siblings got passed around and had, I mean, that's so much, that's so much to deal with as a kid. Yes. So she was essentially an orphan while she was, you know, a child and, and moved in with family and, and different things. And her and her brothers mm -hmm. and sisters got split up multiple times. And I had such a charmed life compared to what what the way she describes it. My parents stayed together. We never really struggled um, in that way. And when she would say, suck it up, <laughs> she, would, she would say, suck it up, buttercup. It is not uh -huh. that bad. I think I didn't appreciate that as a child. I was like, nobody understands me. My mom doesn't <laughs> understand me. Like things are hard. But as an adult, I look back and I'm like, I have no, I, I like, I have no idea what you know, what level of, um, hard things that yes. she went through in order to develop that inner toughness and the perspective that she was bringing to my situations yes. is something that I, I, 
I didn't fully recognize until I was an adult. And I look back and I go, wow, like yeah. I, I can't, I, I'm so grateful that I had the childhood that I did. And I am so grateful that my mother had the perspective that she did yes. to not coddle me as a child, the way that I think a lot of people of my generation were, you know, yes. coddled through. And, um, and she was like, nope, you're gonna be fine. My mom, yeah. if my, if my sister hit me, <laughs> This is my sister will hate this. My, my sister would like, we would, we were really close in age. And so we would get into little scuffles the way that siblings do. And I would say, mom, she hit me. And she would say, hit her back. Like, <laughs> back it up, buttercup. We'll go, That's you right. know, we'll be fine. Take care of business. And that yes. was kind of how I was raised. But I think it, I think it served me well, but I think I never really fully recognized until I was an adult. Oh, like that's the so toughness good. that, 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 that came from. Yes. You know, I, um, I always prayed for my kids growing up, you know, I, you want your kids to have such an easy life, you know? Right. And right. so I always prayed that they would just, you know, that they would be these strong, godly men that, you know, would do that would love their families and all these things. And then I wanted them to have this easy, great life. And then it just didn't work out that way. You know, we had to go through a divorce. They had to work their, pay their own way through college. And there was so much guilt about that. I would watch their friends and parents hand their kids a credit card and send them off to college where I'm watching my kids wait tables to pay for their own college and so much guilt. And I just hated it, but yeah, they will be the first to say, mom, that is what caused character. We knew that we had to work hard. We knew. So really God answered my prayer. <laughs> he yeah. just didn't answer it the way that I, you know, we think that it should have been. Um, so adversity is good for us. Mm -hmm. We don't like to hear that, but adversity is what will create in us a mental toughness when it boils down to it. Yeah. I like that verse in, in Corinthians. It talks about that I will... I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. It's about like, I rejoice in weakness in trials yes. and, and, and when things go, don't go my way, because yep. that's, that's really where God gets to show up. And we, that's in exactly our weakness, right. he is strong and we don't, we don't get to, to learn how, how much God can show up for us. If we are just yeah, easy standing in our own strength life. all the time. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's good Whoa. stuff. Well, um, we love to end each one of these with a challenge to our listeners. And so today we want to challenge you to do some hard things to help create that mental toughness. So maybe you challenge yourself to do one hard thing a day, whatever that looks like to you. Um, you know, marking something something off of that goal or that to-do list, moving your body for 30 minutes, uh, doing a three-minute plank at the end of your workout, whatever that looks like. Just challenge yourself to get out of your comfort zone, do something hard, and I really believe that you're going to find yourself loving yourself more, respecting yourself more, and having more confidence. I love it. Well, if you're not already subscribed to the Without Fear of Her Future podcast, make sure to subscribe and leave us an honest review. And if this episode was helpful to you, share it with a sister who needs to hear this today. And if you're ready to create financial security and generational wealth in 2023 through real estate, you do not want to miss the exclusive women's only masterclass Without Fear of Her Future. Signups are available at the link in the podcast notes for a limited time. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. So on behalf of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and Teresa Todd, I'm Andrea Ingstrom encouraging you to be brave and dream big. Mm -hmm.